Hi guys, here we are today with uh, today's daily gem. It's uh, Rusty Sage, and uh, we're gonna get to know Rusty a little bit more. Um, Rusty is a, a woodworker, and he's gonna explain a little bit more about that himself. Um, maybe Rusty, you can explain uh, who are you and kind of what, uh, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Well, as you said, I'm Rusty Sage. I've been doing woodworking now for probably 47 years, I think it is. Started as an antique dealer. When it came to Canada, it realized there weren't a lot of antiques to buy and sell here, so I got into making furniture. And fortunately, really, met Frederick and Sinclair Phillips, who at that time needed various pieces of furniture and who encouraged me to do it. And it's been a learning curve ever since, actually, because I hadn't really made a lot of furniture before he came to Canada. I'd, I'd done mostly antique restoration and and buying and selling, so that was new. That was a new thing. So that was your introduction to souk. Yeah, um, that's right. Um, they had just uh, about a year or so before I got here. They had just bought the souk Harbour House. They'd never been restaurant owners before, so we were both very new. All the three of us, shall I say. So it was a very fortunate meeting, you know. Some of my most interesting projects really have come through, I might say. Yeah, and Frederica yeah. is wonderful. They, um, yeah. So they were just starting out new, and yeah. that was a good way to get started in Souk working together. And yeah, she, uh, they, they trusted me. I mean, I didn't have any photographs of anything I made that, like they were wanting mm -hmm. because I hadn't done it anyway. <laughs> so they just trusted in me and let say get on with it sort of thing and um, if you walk around the harbour house you'll see the result of that you know it's probably a couple of hundred pieces of different things there that's been built in this shop yeah I'd say a great way to get started um, mm -hmm. you know obviously they just took a look at you had a conversation I know when I met you this first time also I could uh, you know Tell the same thing Dave at the stick and said, <clears throat> you know, you got to talk to Rusty. He was one of the first people that came to his mind for <laughs> blogging a gem because uh, the, uh, you know, the, he got to know you through the right. schools that yeah. you had at the stick. Well, as I say, I, I knew him before he even started. And actually, when he told me where he was going to have a coffee shop, I thought, wow, uh, that's a tough place to be because the businesses before that were there both failed. Right. Because of the position of it being right around that corner, nobody likes to walk around the corner. It seems, but I bet I think he started a trend. You know, walk around the corner. Now it's the place to kind of yeah. the nook they hang out. The best corner to go around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And somebody else was talking about that, about how uh, the woman, one uh, Sheila, who works at the, who runs the, she does the granola and stuff that sells it at the market. Mm -hmm. She was saying how it's become this, uh, you know. The social place, you know, it's like a social club in a way. Yeah. Uh, and which uh, there was a lot of them um, working men's clubs in in England and Wales and places like that. But they all they all revolved around booze right. because that's you know the beer. That's what everybody was would sit around drinking beer and chatting. But coffee, it's, yeah. it's all ages can go. Yeah, right. that's right. And and you see that too. And uh, I think and one of the first jobs I had just before I thumbed out of uh, London t uh, was working in a coffee bar and got to know um, this Italian family who just set up one of the very first coffee houses in, so it's just outside London, mm -hmm. and, uh, first ever espresso machine that I'd ever seen. Wow. So you had, uh, uh, well, okay, so how did you get to, um, uh, souk originally just uh, you know part of the story right you've been here for how many years now 34 actually because uh, we came in 81 okay 34 and that was again by chance we came from England by ship to Montreal and took the train across on the ship we met this man who came from Colwood you know, about 10 miles away mm -hmm. and uh, at that time when the, when we got into Vancouver, we were going to head inland to the Okinawa because I'd been keeping bees when I was in England and oh. by the end of that time, when we came here, uh, I really got in, 
into it and felt that was something I'd like to pursue. Mm -hmm. And the man who interviewed us at Canada House said, the Okanagan is the place for that. So that's where we were going. We didn't know any different. Right. So, but anyway, so we met the, this, this guy from Colwood says, well, before you head in then, why don't you come over to the island? And there was a couple of other uh, people that we knew living around Victoria that were relatives of friends of ours there and they said look them up so so we said come over to, the, over to the island stay a few days so we were come stay with him a couple of days and he said well you know you might as well go up the west coast and check out the you know, French beach yeah. campsite mm -hmm. so we go there and we come through souk and next thing we know we're out here again looking around and you know, a month later, we bought a house here. You know, wow. just and uh, the kids had en enrolled at John Muir School because yeah. the house was just down the hill. Right. So that so it pulled you in just yeah, like everybody else. That's right. Myself. That's yeah. right. And I've seen it happen so many times. Yeah. So many people who come to stay at the Harbour House or in other bed and breakfasts and never been here before and realize, whoa, and they end up buying land or buying a place here. Yeah. A lot of my work has come from Americans who've done that, who stayed at. Harbour House, taking trips out, bought land, had houses built, and use a lot of local craftsmen to do the finishing and the furnishings. Everyone's supporting each other. And yeah, that's the way it is over here. Um, okay, so well, uh, uh, if you had uh, like a piece of advice, you've gone on quite a big journey to get here. If you had a piece of advice to share with uh, everybody. Uh, what would you like to share? Uh, I, think, I think, like I told you, you know, uh, listen to your instincts, and uh, you know, don't think about things too much. And, and instincts are your heart, really. So follow your heart. Follow your heart. <laughs> Great one. Um, okay, so thanks for sharing about yourself. Um, mm -hmm. If you had a, uh, a person to nominate uh, as a daily gem, someone in the community. <laughs> Uh, who do you think you'd like to nominate as uh, a gentleman? I was, my daughter said, think of a lady. Have you, have you interviewed uh, Mary Alice Johnson? Yes. Okay, so. And I'm, I'm not sure whether Bev, Bev Petal is around still. Okay. She's a, a blacksmith, a lady blacksmith. Okay. Who does sort of metal sculpture as well. And she's always been in the art show till this year. So I wonder if she's still around. Okay. But, but she would have been a neat one. I'm trying to think of other women. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll look up Bev yeah. and uh, see if she's still around right. and if she's not. Um, and we're looking at doing uh, like have an expose on people that were around before anyway. Right. So that would be an idea for you to do, for me to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, well, you know, thanks. And also uh, Dave, uh, just for being a daily gem. He is giving you a free vicino from the speed stick. Ah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, thanks for us for sharing. You are a gem. Yeah. Thank you.